Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now it's time for Off the Press. Where we'll be reviewing the papers this morning just to know what the national dailies are saying. Um, today we have Nya Etok, who's going to review the papers with us. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Good morning, Thank sir. You. Welcome. Good morning, sir. Welcome. Uh, Prophet, yeah, <laughs> because his name is Ezekiel. Yes, well, once, once I just uh, see he's the one, okay, it's a prophet coming. Uh, it's good to have you, sir. Uh, thanks Thank for joining you. us. Yeah, Thank you. All right, today we're going to be starting with The Guardian, and the major headline here says anxiety, which is, you know, even the uh, hot topic, it says anxiety as CBN sacks boards of union, Keystone, and Polaris banks. Um, please, what are your thoughts on this? Mm. All that is going on, we have about three banks here, and we don't even know how many more might um, be sacked. But what is your take on all of this? The fact that the CBN has sacked the boards of Union, Keystone, and Polaris Bank. Okay, um, the very first thing is that um, I've been really concerned about our banks, about the state of our economy, about the dynamics and the fundamentals. Uh, it's one thing to have a, a visionless you know, system. It's another thing to have the federating unit or the component of the system frustrating everything that is going on. Mm. We say that the problem with Nigeria today is a problem of corruption. There can never be successful corruption without the active connivance, colluding, and collaboration of the banks. Now, corruption comes in two ways, either the private system or the public system. Within the public system, you can't be successful with corruption without the civil servants working with you. But you see, within this tripartite, the bank is the, the, at the apex at the bottom, you have the you know civil society, and on that hand, you have the 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 the, the, um, the civil servants. Okay, now none of them can successfully prosecute corruption or undertake corruption without the active connivance, collaboration of the banks. And you see, even during COVID, when things were very very difficult. You keep seeing the banks declare humongous and unbelievable profits. Mm. So the question is, to what extent is the bank the problem of Nigeria? I think that the banks are one of the biggest problems of Nigeria. Now, you can't have a system that thrives without the MSMEs, the micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises. These enterprises work based on the fundings of their ideas, and the fundings can only go through the banking institution. But I want to tell you that at my level, having what it takes to run a system successfully, I can't assess a loan from a bank. Extremely difficult. Mm. I'm into real estate. I'm into a partnership with the federal government. Even with everything they can see, to get a loan from the bank is almost impossible. Now, if that happens to me, what is the fate? Try to find out how many Nigerians have been able to get facilities from the banks to do their businesses. If you go abroad, banks fund your idea. Yeah. In Nigeria, banks don't even fund your, 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 your investment or your whatever it is you take to them. For you to go through the process of getting a loan from a bank, it's like going through the eye of the needle. But leave that alone. They will say, oh, they are protecting depositors' money. But find out this forex stuff. Ask yourself very simple questions. Do you know that for you to get the POS working, they must have an understanding with somebody in the bank? Mm -hmm. Whereas that you cannot find money in the ATMs yeah. 
try to interview the POS guys, they will tell you that they go to the banks and that the Alga is there. They sell money. Do you understand me? They frustrate mm. the system. They, they, the money that should go into ATMs are being used by cashiers and bankers to give, to sell to these people, to sell back to us. If I can sit down here. I mean, I have some of the biggest, talk of any of the banks, the friends, you know, at the, either the MD or the chief executive or the, or the chairman is my a personal friend. I can tell you any of the top banks. But you see, we're talking of Nigeria now, not friendship. So what the, 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 the government is doing, you see, I'm starting to look at President Tinubu a little differently. Because between you and I, let's say confession on national television, I, I didn't really think that President Tinubu would be able to look at corruption. Mm. You know, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, sincerely, I didn't. But there are certain things that are being done now that I'm saying you never judge a book by the cover. I'm starting to see certain, certain things he's doing. And I want to call on all Nigerians to look beyond party, leave party aside, and see how they can lend weight to, to the system and the president to succeed. Now, this is not like, you know, hero worshipping. There are certain things he's doing that is wrong, and I'll come here and, and call it out. This is wrong. This is unacceptable. This is not okay. Okay? I will do that. But when he takes a right decision, something that you and I probably never expected, let us also apply the stick and carrot approach. And for what he's done of recent, there is no way that the CBN governor would have gone ahead to suspend these people if he did not get the authorization of Mr. President. I believe that because, I mean, he could have done that, but because of the system, the way it works. And then the ministers that have been suspended, you know, I think is one so far, but the second one seems to be on the line. And then, you know, this could not be if the president did not say go for it. And I tend to see a president who is out to surprise us. I pray that I am right this time around. But Mr. President, I beg go no vex. As I clap for you now, tomorrow, when I see the one where no day good, for instance, I like the idea of cutting cost of governance by the flight tickets and then the entourage. Mm -hmm. But Your Excellency, you know that that is not where the problem is. The whole budget for that is about 20 billion and taking 60% out is about taking maybe about them. Um, 10, 11, no, I think it's 18 billion. It comes about 9, 10 billion. That's not where our problem is. Mm -hmm. You know where our problem is and where to count cost. I saw your convoy and it was obscene. Mm. You need to understand emotional intelligence and know that some of these things are absolutely unnecessary. So, Mr. President, you've taken a very good first step, but I beg of you, I beseech you by the mercies of God, do the one where my own brother, the Senate president, a hey, bros, no vex, so you know this na national television. As Mr. President has done, please also do. I know you will do. You are my brother. I trust you, Mr. Senate President. Also cut. Make something remain so that poor man go breathe. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so since we're still talking about corruption, there's a little one I want to take here, which says. Um, federal government disbursed 10 billion exactly. to 165 private accounts in 2022. So um, we know the the scandal that is on Better Edu right now about the um, 585 million naira that was sent to an individual account, a private account. But we're even seeing that there's been antecedents to all of this. The federal government has been disbursing monies to private accounts. Even in the whole of 2022, there was about 10 billion sent to private accounts. If that's not corruption, what are we saying? Because I want to believe that if you need to do a transaction from the federal government to anybody at all, there should be proof that this is a company that you're sending the money to. And so obviously the money is being used for a project or something whatsoever. But how are you sending money to a private account? And here we're seeing about 10 billion being sent to 165 private accounts in 2022. Alone. How 
Do you understand? Alone, 2022 alone. alone. We're not talking about 2023 and, and now. How do we stop all of this? If we're, if we're commending the president, I don't want a situation whereby we're only looking at the humanitarian affairs ministry. Are we going to look at every one of them, every single ministry, and try to curtail the fact that there should be no reason whatsoever a ministry or even any government agency at all should be sending monies to a private account? What do you think about I'll, that? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you two things. One, the banks I talked about. Yes. Two, the ministries. If you know, if you have the faintest idea of how our civil service runs, you can carry a gun and shoot somebody. Mm -hmm. If you have, let me tell you know, you know, sometimes it the Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Yeah. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Right. There are certain things I wish I could say on air, but these are things you and I know. Yes. Towards the end of the year, the way civil servants retire money mm. that has not been used is common knowledge. Do you understand me? They run the biggest racket. This comes as no news to you and I. We know it. But somehow, we've been turning a blind eye. And let me tell you something. Better a do at the end of the day, I will go to her, even if she's sent to prison. Even if, even if, please note, because she's innocent as of today. Yes, on to I will anything. one day go to her and say, God bless you. Because she is going to become a door that is opened mm. to things that must be addressed decisively. You know? God says the Son of Man will need be crucified, but woe to him through it in which it comes. So somehow, Nigeria will need to be rescued. But blessed is that woman that is used. Do you understand me? Maybe one way or the other. Because, you see, Beta Edu had come to create a certain image for herself, where people loved her for what she was doing, where people envied her for the way she looks and the way she's getting results, where people were getting anti you know, kind of apprehensive because of what could come. As a result, when the issue concerned her, there was an instant public outrage. You know, the outrage were in two ways, one in support. And you see, those people that are against you are always more vicious. <laughs> those people that love you and care about you, they never talk, you know. There was a time that Mr. Donald Duke told me, he said, he said, Ezekiel, my concern about running for presidency is because out of every 10 Nigerians, seven love me. They care about me. They want me to be president. Out of the other three, two are just well, well, but one hates me with a passion, cannot stand me, and will. And you guess what? The seven that love me are quiet mm. the two that are here and there are just watching but that one that hates me will make so much noise that this seven will run away he said ezekiel i will end up probably losing because the good people are quiet and complacent and docile while the bad people are vicious nigeria is not as bad as people think oh. mm. it's just that the bad people are extremely bad while the good people are very docile, they are very complacent. They don't, eh, you know, I don't want, well, you know, I, I contested the election. The number of people that came to me, you know, you are the best governor, you know, you are the best, they will not say it openly. Mm. I challenged one of them, I said, why don't you write this thing on Facebook? He sent me a long list of the things I've done for him in this country and blah, blah, blah. And I said, why don't you post it? He said, yo, yo, is in my language, is no. And I'm mm. like, why? Yeah. What are you afraid of? So what am I trying to say? Because it was better edu, there has been this reaction, and this yeah. reaction is the beginning of many things to come. Mm. When you talk of 10 billion paid into this number of accounts, that is just like one ministry. That is absolute nothing. But if it can be used as a point to make a statement that going forward, I was addressing my staff, I think, two days back, 
And one of them in particular, I told him, you know what? This is 2024. Everything that has happened in the past, I'm going to draw a line. I'm not going to look back. But I beg you, as from today, no more. If we want to look back in Nigeria, we will not make progress because too much. One way or the other, it will come around to you. So my own approach is let us make haste, you know, um, what there's a way, make haste um, make slowly. Way. Okay. Yes, let's apply wisdom and let us draw certain lines while still, you know, let me end on this because it's very important that I animate this and we know. I say this before and I bring it again. It should be what every leader should apply. In a car, you have a windscreen that goes from one end to the other, top to bottom. The whole front is windscreen, okay? But there is a small mirror put at the top here called the rear view mirror and two of them by the side. Small, 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 right? Anybody that drives a car with the rear view mirror is sure to crash. But you cannot drive that car without that rear view mirror and the side mirrors. They help you to navigate. So we are going to keep constantly looking back at certain things, but let us not drive Nigeria with the rear view and side view mirrors. Let us keep driving with the front mirror, but we need those paths to bring certain people back to give account while we now use them to set the templates going forward. That's my prescription for a new Nigeria that works for all. Okay. Um, while we move to the next uh, newspaper, let me do a carry forward, you know, carry over. <laughs> carry forward. Yeah. So uh, in the, the Guardian, we have um, exit of multinationals debt knell, or debt knell for local industries. We have that. We also have uh, NGX records, that is on the punch now, NGX records a 638 billion Naira loss first in New Year. And then Naira plunges to 1,082 oh, 1, Naira per dollar after CBN $2 billion repayment. Okay, so all of these are concerned, or the economy is uh, what is tied to all of these three. That's the common denominator for all the stories that I have given you. Now, what do you think? the economy of Nigeria in 2024 is going to be knowing these things are happening. Multinationals are leaving, Naira is crashing every day, and then NGX is losing in, uh, as early as this in the year. What do you think will be of the economy? Uh, uh, I'll tell you this. My mother was a woman of wisdom, and she used to tell me something that has remained with me. It says, if money comes to your house and does not see his brother, it will not stay. That is one <laughs> of the big one. steps I've learned about savings. Mm. If money comes to your house and does not see his brother, that money will not stay. In which case, if you don't have a savings culture, no matter how it is, do you get the point? You will always, you will, you will never prosper. Now, what's the correlation of that with what you've just said? Multinationals have been in this country. All of a sudden, they are leaving. Tell me how an investor will want to come when the one that is there is leaving. The first question is, why is that guy leaving? You can now say that, you see, they used to be corrupt, and because of the way we've set up our template, to make sure that we kill corruption, they can no longer thrive because they were rent seekers and this and that. As a result, they have left. You can now say, good riddance to bad rubbish. But when they tell you that the operational dynamics in the state can no longer support, you know, honest investment, when they tell you that the power sector is putting so much pressure on them that they can no longer have their bottom line, you know, the meeting. When they tell you that the level of insecurity is such that they cannot, um, you know, operate without, uh, in fact, their market is shrinking because of this or that. And when they tell you that 
the legal system, they've been trying to get justice. They cannot get it. The way things are, we cannot play the Nigerian way. We better just shut down and leave because we are international agencies that operate by international standards. Now, if these are facts, then why would you, if you are an honest investor, come in? I repeat what I'd said before. I said this on a certain forum, and one guy was, was very unhappy. I said, shut down Nigeria. Shut down Nigeria. All this going about looking for, make your fundamentals right. One year will not kill anybody. I don't want any investors. Look, you that are in here, 28 in three months, no, it's not okay. And not just 28. These are globally rated multinationals that people know who they are. What are we doing wrong? What should we do? Where are the challenges? We now look at our monetary policies and everything, our operational uh, environment. We look at uh, uh, the, the, um, the justice system. Do you understand? We look at the central bank policies. We look at the security dynamics. Why should the Southeast still have sit at home today? If I were Mr. President or his advice, I would say, sir, forget traveling abroad. Relocate to Southeast one week. Live in Southeast one week. Break that. Do you know that within, within two weeks, you can break that. Have functions on Mondays that are sit at home. Deliberately fix things. Break that jeans. What is this issue with Namdi Kanu? Come to me. Let's talk. Let's face this issue once and for all. Worry man says every diner die. <laughs> Let's face this issue once for all. Southeast must open up. You address that. It doesn't take you one month. Even if it takes you one month to address Southeast issues. Decisively, call all the leaders, call all the governors, call them the car and have a, a talk. Animate it, let people see. The first thing is that those who are afraid. Have functions on Mondays. Do distribution of things, palliatives, whatever, on Mondays in the market. Put things that will make, and then flood. Let's see anybody. Fly drones. Bring drones. I'll tell you what to do. Fly drones. and Let's see that man that will try to attack one person. You can solve Southeast problem. You go to the Niger Delta. What are the issues? Bunkering and all that. Why is that so? Can I have a deal with the with the with the with the oil producing uh, companies? You know the exploring companies, such that I give you a percentage to take care of it, and you pay me this. Do you understand? So that the responsibility of securing this is on your head. And what is the dynamics? We now go to the north. I will tell you what to do in the north. How to get the young people engaged and vibrant. I will tell you how to track the system. You cannot have a situation where you say some places are ungoverned spaces. I will tell you how to track this, what I, I develop called the national eye. Why am I saying all these things? Because we've got to all come together. Mr. Tinu is not a one man that knows everything. No, no leader knows everything. I wanted to be a governor. I don't know anything, everything. But you are the sort of thing that when ideas come, the leadership in you shows you how you can distill these ideas if you mean well. And right now, I'm starting to feel that the president means well from some of the actions he's taking. But we have to come in. I was listening to Mr. Pat to told me about two days back, and he was frustrated. He, 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 was, he, was, he was incensed, as he speak, because we that call ourselves the elite, we are keeping quiet and letting this, with all due respect, like charlatans who don't have anything between their brains, most of them run the system. When you talk, they say, oh, you are being elitist. Oh, you are being idealistic. Oh, you are being a theorist. Can you run a system without being elitist, idealistic, and a theorist? Is there any system in the world that is not run based on cerebral competence and capacity? And you are telling me that if you have brain, you cannot be a politician. And we are setting it. That's why I'm in this politics. I don't care whether I win, I lose. I always win. Because I've decided I'll give my best to it. I cannot be sitting down. And, and I don't even know the word to use. A running system. You go for political meetings and all they do is sharing money. No, political parties should be ideas party. Every party should be government either in action or in waiting. That's a political system. And you know that Nyeto is going to be a lone voice. 
unless people like you come in and say that makes sense. How can you run a company without parameters, dynamics? What is the Nigeria ideology today in governance? What is the mindset of the average civil servant? Are you aware of the importance of the civil servant? That no government works without civil servant? The question is, what is the thinking? What is the mindset? What is the ideology? What is the man mental uh, well, you know, the disposition of the average civil servant? If it is negative, how then will you not have a government that has become the poverty capital of the world with endowed people? So I listen to you who make analysis, intelligent, articulate, informed, and yet we have a country. Go and look at your local government chairman. You'll be ashamed of yourself. Go and look at your councillors. And those are the people at the grassroots. Some local government chairman in, in an enlightened environment like South South Nigeria cannot read and write properly, cannot read address. And they are the people there. They are the politicians. Well, you where, where, where do we go it? from here is the question. Because uh, um, right now, like in the Ministry of the, the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, uh, the, the minister has been suspended okay. and the permanent secretary is taking over. And if this is the bedrock of where the corruption comes, the civil service, Best what do done. we do? Best because done. it's like, it's like you're, now sending, you're now sending a homosexual to prison for doing what he's doing. So if I'm, I'm gay and then you're sending me to where the, <laughs> those people that, <laughs> that you are sending me. So, the reason for I'm, going, me to, I'm going to meet my market. Yes, yeah, I'm going to meet my, my, my prey I'll, I'll, where, where it I'll is. I'll tell you this. You can never, no matter how close you are to a governor, you cannot raise a memo hmm. on any issue except you are either a civil servant or an appointee at a certain level. You can't raise a memo. That's the thing. What that means is that you actually cannot succeed in, in doing anything in the ministries without, without the, civil the civil servant. servant. So the question is this better edu get to what extent is the palm set that is taking over now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. innocent? As is, I'm sure you know where I'm question. coming yeah. from. That's, yeah. that's the thing. That's the thing. So now question. you're suspending one person and then putting it into the hands of another person you're not even sure is not the root cause of everything yeah, that is happening. Because the system seems already infiltrated. Because corruption. everybody who is politician, who is a politician, is advised by the people who are in the system or yes. are the civil servants. So uh, I don't even know. We, we'll just keep faith alive and that is it. And now, talking about the system that is worrisome, we also have... Yes, someone was um, indicted once for sex for Max at the sea. They suspended Unical Don, still in prison after 250 million Naira bill. I mean, why does this keep happening? Sometimes you go into the prisons and you're looking at the people. Uh, a lot of them are just there awaiting trial and nothing is being done. Some of them spend up to 10 years, I can tell you for a fact, because I've had that experience with yeah. people who I met uh, while I was doing some, some things with the prisons at one time in my life. So uh, now someone has been given bail, he has met the bail conditions, but he's still in prison, it's still after 250 million naira bail. And I don't know why the system is the way it is. You see, uh, the word Impun I don't know, this is a two-legged question. On one hand is the word impunity. We need to come to respect rule of law as, as, as mandatory, as obligatory, as incumbent. We must come to respect rule of law. It's very important. If you say a man is given, is granted bail, you give the conditions, and the person meets the bail conditions, let the person go. If you don't want the person to go, find a way in court of letting them know that they should please allow you. And besides, you know, the you know, the, the what happens in our in our system reminds me of the the the, the joke about the Yoruba man and the worry boy. Do you understand me? The Yoruba man, you know, you should see the body. I will kill you. I will finish you. He removes his dress. He gesticulates and everything. He's going to blah, blah, blah. He, it's all sound and fury signifying nothing. 
Fast forward to the worry guy. He looks at you. He gives you one. Bah! I said, guys, I'll go sound you. <laughs> After he has already before. finished. <laughs> now, the Nigerian police, they carry you into prison. Then they do investigation like the worry guy. Mm -hmm. But the proper thing is that even if it takes two years, they should inv investigate you even without you knowing. When they have gotten everything that is needed uh, you know, for you, within once they arrest you, by the next day they can charge you because they have everything. So I want to appeal to our enforcement agencies. I beg, don't do worry style. You <laughs> slap somebody, finish. You say, I go sound you. You bring somebody to prison before you look for, hey, what did he do wrong? Hey, what do we look? No, no, leave this one. And as a result, you are keeping the guy there to do something you could have been doing outside. And guess what? Every day that man is there, he is costing Nigeria 750 naira. I hope we remember that. I mean, that's, 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 that's my news. Is is no, no, no. Compared no, no, to 12,000, no, no. 12,000 the same. No, no, I'm telling you that apart from messing with the man's liberty, you are costing the nation on top. They said no, it was 12,000 yeah, or something. Saying they said it was 12,000 yeah, naira every Yeah, day. that they used to, to, to feed, uh, to feed uh, uh, every prisoner in Nigeria. And then thank there was the you. case of uh, the leader of the Sheikh movement that they said they were using 2 million or so mm. to feed him every day. And we're just talking about one person. So if you do the numbers, so, so how a numbers, lot of people that might be there. every day. Even though I know it's it, not even up to five. The second leg is not up to what our politicians spend. Innocent, yeah, the, the second leg is the innocent. You'll be shocked the number of people that are innocent. Exactly. You know, That's what we're recently, saying. Recently, one of my one of the, the, the young people that, that was in my media team was um, arrested and I went to see him and I spent that time to talk to some of those uh, boys there. You can tell that some of them have no idea where they are there. And some of them have been there for over four months. So maybe there will be, I want to thank people who go around prisons. We, we all can't do anything. My strong area is that of scholarships and education. But please, if you can afford to spare some time to go to the prisons and some of them is bail, some bail like 5,000 naira. Yeah. And then... The IG has to really, really tell us, should we pay for bail or should we not pay for bail? I don't understand. There's something about this, you know, come and bail yourself. I don't understand. And how does it work? Because that's one area we really need to look to. Because sometimes it's like the police will just go, it's like, it's an assumption. Sometimes they even say bail is free. Bail is yeah, they'll free. go and collect 20 people, put you there. What you do, you don't know. They say, call your people to come and bail you.